My name is Gordon Graham. I'm Operations Manager with Tenny, the Transgender Equality Network Ireland. And I'm speaking with my good friend, um, Andy Martin, who I've known for a lot of my life and we know each other in lots of different ways. Um, and full disclosure, Andy used to work for Tenny. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what we're going to talk today what we'll talk about today is sport. So I suppose what's really relevant to that is the fact that you've recently co-founded an organization called Trans Sports. So we want to have a bit of a conversation just around sport and what that, you know, which I think is kind of a challenging subject for a lot of trans people. Um, and to kind of dig into that a little bit and, and talk a little bit about your own personal experience. Does that sound okay with you, Andy? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think, I mean, just dive right in. It is definitely a challenging subject for a lot of trans people. And I also think it's a subject we don't really talk about unless we're talking about it through the lens of uh, stories that come out in the media that are generally against trans people in sports. Um, so one of the core things, before I talk about my own experience, about that conversation in general is about having it, talking about trans people participating in sports and just real life trans people wanting to play sports, which is generally how I would approach it. Um, personally, I was very... Were you a sporty kid? I was a very sporty kid. <laughs> Like, no, but like, like, like a very stereotypically sporty kid, not very good at sports, but, you um, but I loved it. And it was really important to me. Um, and then as I started to explore my gender, um, that pretty much just stopped. It wasn't, there weren't spaces I could feel comfortable in. Um, and I think physically, definitely, um, and mentally, my health just deteriorated, um, and I really, really missed it. And it was kind of like a, a situation where I was having to choose something that made me feel the most me in order to be me mm. and be seen as me. That's a very difficult decision. I think a lot of trans people deal with that. Um, and can, did that did that feel like at the time, I suppose I should say, just to put things in context, the reason we're having this conversation is because Tenny is launching our new strategic plan. Yes. And part of our strategic plan, like as you would expect, is about like making sure that trans people have access to all of the different services and all the different areas of life that they should have. And there's kind of an equality in access to, to different areas. And sport, for me, and I'm glad we're having this conversation, feels like one of those areas, which is almost like the last the last area that people are able to actually yeah. access. And it's important yeah. to hear this story about like what this was like for you. So just to put it in context, I should have said that at the beginning, a conscious choice for you that you were making at that time, or did it just kind of happen? Um, I think some of them definitely. So some of the sports that I played, um, it was a conscious choice. So I stopped swimming. Um, not that you play swimming, but I, I, I used to swim a lot. It was, it was very important to me. Um, so I stopped swimming because I couldn't um, access swimming the way I wanted to. And I didn't feel comfortable with my body or being perceived in a particular way. Uh, team sports, I had to stop because in order for me to transition while playing those sports, um, sports are inherently gendered a lot of the time. Um, and in one case, there wasn't access to women's teams, which I didn't particularly want to play on anyway. And in the other case, I, I didn't feel comfortable or probably wouldn't have been allowed to join boys' teams, men's teams. Um, I, I was also very big into martial arts, and that kind of came... At, you never knew that about me, did you? <laughs> Um, I did martial arts in a variety of forms from when I was about five to when I was 16. Really? Um, yeah. Um, and, uh, and that was kind of gendered, was it? Or what was like? Competitions are gendered. Oh, right. So, um, like full disclosure, I know nothing about sports as, as you know. Yeah. Um, I do know that about you, but you do a lot of great work on it. So, you know, fair play to you. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so. The, the martial arts was like very, often we hear about trans people in sports, it's given with this kind of competitive side to the conversation where trans people are judged 
based on the you know the fairness of them competing Mm. um and that was something i definitely came up against that was not a choice i just had to stop um because i was in a situation where me training was going nowhere like i couldn't compete i i wasn't able to um according to kind of where i was fairly compete um and a lot of people i think we do find so obviously you mentioned that we co-founded transports and um, which at its core is about access to sports and healthy opportunities um, and promotion of health um we do have a lot of things when we talk to people about trans people about why they would want to be engaged in sports what you know kind of their experience with sport is we have a lot of people say well you know they have been engaged in sports like that where there is a gendered competitive element and then they are essentially told that they can continue training but they can't compete they can't get their match they can't um really use any of those skills and participate in the same so even though they can participate in a club that's being inclusive they can't participate to the full level they would want to there's still discrimination and exclusion happening when there is inclusion happening in a lot of cases um and there's no there's no need for it at a participation level when you look at it from like you would know this as well obviously um the policies that are put in place speaking to different organizations and overarching governing bodies of sporting organizations about how to make things fair not just for the trans people who want to participate in sports and in some cases compete in sports um that isn't the focus but also for the other people who might have concerns around that and how to make sure that education is there um one thing that we found i think sorry just to, just to say i think you're touching on the two things that that you know that i really think and i suppose in tenny's work we believe make change which is policy alongside education like you need to give people a framework of how to to make their whatever it is accessible and then train people and, and educate them and i think without without both of them together like you know it, it just won't work there's Sorry. no point like there's no point in having a brilliant you can have the best policy in the world if it's sitting in a drawer somewhere it's no use to anybody you can have the most educated individual coaches people you know completely open to trans people participating but without the support of um policy and policy um and like procedures to back them up there's no point in that either like or there is point and value in each but they don't work unless they're together um one thing that we found as we did a, when we started we did a, a survey and we got a quite a lot of response where we really just wanted to see because one thing's about transport is there's no point in us deciding what it's going to be it needs yeah. to be based on what trans people on the ground what trans people want um and we found that overwhelmingly <laughs> and this was interesting uh one of the questions we asked was what things people felt would make accessing sports easier as a trans person we also found that i think it was like 93% of people who took the survey didn't feel comfortable accessing sports because of their transition but we found that some of the things that would help them were and that they felt were one non-gendered um spaces or exclusive spaces for people but two was that instead of like just trans coaches trans aware and educated coaches so there's a definite recognition there of well the people who have the sports knowledge aren't always going to be the trans people though we would like it if they were in this scenario but for now what we need to do is ensure that the coaches the people working in in sports are educated about the issues trans people have and how to to treat trans people and that's across i mean you're talking about the strategic plan the core bit of that is obviously participating at all levels in society right it it's also about participating in all levels of society without being made an exception or an exclusion in that so like it's wonderful when people respond to having a trans person come to join a sports team come to to swim in a pool or anything like that by looking at it and saying well, what policies do we have in place what education do we need but it still tends to become the one trans person and it's being done for that person as opposed to any trans person could at any point decide to join a team decide to participate in that sport to access a gym any of those things and it's just it should be 
right there with any other policies you do to do or any other things you have in place to do with access. So it's to do with the fact that trans people exist and visibly are allowed to do so if they want to, I think but don't have to. I think that's such an important point because I, I think you're so right. Like often it does get focused on this particular trans person, you know, and, and often, you know, the, the, the change that needs to happen needs to be a bit more systemic than just making sure that this trans person is having a good experience, although that is also important. Um, we're we're going to run out of time because we're, we're not giving ourselves a lot of time. <laughs> so, um, but let me, like, I think I know the answer to this question, but like, let me ask you, like, why is it important that trans people are able to participate in sport? Why does that matter? I mean, we've touched on different bits, obviously, inclusion, all that kind of stuff. I think the key thing is, why is it important for anyone to access sports? Why is it important for anyone to be able to take control and access uh things to do with their own health and why should one group of people be excluded from that because that system is gendered it doesn't make sense trans people um i mean one right you should be allowed to participate in sports if you want a trans sports were always like trans were always saying trans sports it's like sports with trans people that's that's the whole core of it um for me personally i was talking about swimming i went back swimming typically just before before COVID, so um, I have lost that opportunity. Um, but it was something that I did for myself. I was doing it for my health to get in, in better shape and for my mental health to alleviate some of the stress that I felt. And it was one of the best things I could do for myself. And it still was like navigating changing rooms was, was difficult for me. I had to like build up all of those things, you know, and kind of that confidence. And, and I am in a position of privilege in the fact that with my transition and where I am in my transition, I felt like I comfortably could do that. But I did wait until I got to this point of my transition to feel like I could do that. And I think, why is it beneficial for trans people? Like transition is at its core about like looking after you and being you for you and doing things for you that you have probably been denying yourself um, for, a short time, a long time, whatever. And sports are the same thing where you're, you're doing it either because you're, you know, you want to do it for fun or because you want to get in better shape or because you want to feel that sense of community. And it just seems to me so strange that you're almost like in a feedback loop where you want to access something, but you're not allowed to because you're trans. But the reason you want to access it in the first place is because you're finally doing things for you. Or maybe you've been participating in sports your whole life and someone said, well, you can't do that anymore, even though literally <laughs> there's no other change. Um, and I think it's just really important to be able to have those opportunities, even if you don't want them. I mean, what we're talking about with, with sports and trans sports particularly is that we're talking about people having the option of participating in sports like you could have the like it's so strange that it's judged on a competitive level you know based on what professional athletes are doing or, or anything like that because no other group of people get that like you have pub leagues going on of like five-a-side football where you mightn't be brilliant at sports I mean maybe you are but you might be brilliant at it but it's a social thing it's something for you and it's just so strange that trans people, when they're trying to do something for themselves, can't do that because they're trans. It's like an infinite <laughs> loop. Yeah, I mean, it just like, I mean, thanks for kind of putting that so well. And I mean, it just sounds so unbelievably tiring. It was awesome um, before you get there to train. Yeah. Like. <laughs> Even the thought of like all the stuff you have to navigate, negotiate and think through is just draining. Um, thank you so much for talking and having this chat. I hope that our strategic plan and the work we do means that like there will be less stories like yours, Andy, and that like we kind of think about all the future little Andys who should be able to <laughs> whatever sport they want to do for their whole life. And hopefully we'll be able to make that happen. But thanks so much for sharing. And it was really good to talk to you.